We're discovering the cosmos is full of alien planets, exoplanets, strange worlds outside our solar system. There's much, much more out there than we had ever imagined. Exoplanets are shaking up our understanding of the universe. The cosmos is a chaotic array of the odd, the weird, and the wonderful. The more we find, the less we know. We've now found over 4,000 exoplanets, a rapidly increasing array of strange alien worlds. And the more we uncover, the weirder they get. They don't act at all like what we're seeing in our solar system. There are planets out there interacting. There are planets dive bombing their sun, gigantic planets orbiting really close in, everything in every kind of combination you can possibly imagine. One alien world truly stands out. This is the planet from hell. When we examine the atmosphere of this planet, what we find is liquid iron. The iron is heated up so much it's been vaporized and it's falling out of the sky like rain. WASP-76b is 640 light years away in the Pisces constellation. At first, this planet looks like nothing out of the ordinary. WASP-76b orbits a star just like our sun, which is really reassuring in a universe which is full of the unfamiliar. WASP-76b is a gas giant, a bit like Jupiter in our solar system. But its location makes a big difference. Jupiter is almost 500 million miles away from the sun. WASP-76b is just 3 million miles from its star. And that's what makes this planet a hot Jupiter. Temperatures on WASP-76b exceed 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, creating one of the most extreme environments in the universe. The fact that it's so close to its star has another consequence. WASP-76b's spin is locked to its star. The gravity from the star will grip onto the planet, slow its rotation over time if it had any to start with, and lock it so that one face always faces toward the star. This gravitational grip is called tidal locking. There are consequences for being a tidally locked planet, and not all of them are good. That can set up some pretty extreme weather conditions, very hot on the daytime side and extremely cold on the nighttime side. In 2020, we took a closer look at the atmosphere between the day and night side of the planet. This twilight zone has plenty of rain, but here it rains molten iron. Vaporized iron? Well, most materials can exist in different states, so think about water, right? Water can be a solid when it's ice, and then when you heat it up, it becomes water, the liquid part of water, and then if you heat it up more, it becomes steam, like out of a kettle. And this is true of every chemical element. So for iron, if you heat it even more up, it becomes a gas. So you really can have clouds of iron vapor condensing and raining liquid iron. These nightmare weather conditions are a direct result of WASP-76b's proximity to its star. WASP-76b is so close to its star that its star is superheating its atmosphere. So the upper atmosphere is heated and rises. The atmosphere on the day side reaches over 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The planet's night side is cooler at 2,730 degrees Fahrenheit. This difference in temperature sets up spectacular wind streams. On Earth, the fastest recorded winds have reached speeds in excess of 250 miles an hour. On WASP-76b, winds hit speeds in excess of 11,000 miles an hour, strong enough to move millions of tons of iron vapor to the planet's night side, where it undergoes a dramatic change. It's cooler there, can't be maintained as a gas, so it condenses and becomes a liquid and then rains out. 
there are clouds coming up and forming and then rain is falling, but it's iron. It's iron vapor, it's iron rain. It would be spectacular to see in that brief moment you have before you vaporize too. <laughs> On the search for alien worlds, we've uncovered plenty of the strange, the scary, and the incredible. But we still haven't detected anything remotely like our planet. But just what are our chances of finding an Earth-like planet? The big question, are we going to find another Earth? The answer is yes, we will. And the reason I say that is because there are a lot of planets in our galaxy. And just looking at really rough numbers, there are probably billions of planets similar to Earth. And mixing and matching all of those conditions, it seems to me that the way to bet is that some other planet, at least one, if not a lot, are gonna look a lot like our own. Finding an exoplanet with conditions suitable for life takes a lot of luck. Sifting through these exoplanets, looking for something that's habitable for life is like an interstellar dating app. If we have molten iron rain, that's definitely out. You see toxic atmosphere and you swipe, and you see red giant and you swipe. This one's like up, oh, too hot, too cold, too small, too thick an atmosphere. No UV rays, no, 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 doesn't even have a star, but like it's just not working again and again and again. When it comes to finding life, there is one basic element that everyone agrees is necessary. There is a phrase that we use whenever we talk about the search for life elsewhere. Follow the water. And now we think there could be lots of worlds out there that do contain water. But is there a catch? Could they hold too much water? A 2019 study suggests the Milky Way might contain many worlds with thousands of times more water than Earth. Many of these planets are a bit smaller than Neptune. We call them sub-Neptunes. We think we found such a planet just 40 light years from Earth in the constellation Ophiuchus. Scientists have nicknamed the planet the water world. So far, we're not too sure what GJ1214b looks like. Though Earth is called the blue planet, it's only 0.05% water by mass. As much as 70% of GJ1214b's mass could be water. The planet is thought to have a rocky core, strange oceans, and a hot steamy atmosphere of water vapor. Unlike Earth, GJ1214b most likely has no complex arrangement of water and land masses. At land, interacting with that water to have a good location for life. We think life began in the oceans, but it needed chemicals from rocks to start. Without the interaction between land and oceans, life might not have evolved. We need to find worlds with just the right amount of water and land for life to evolve. GJ1214b looks like a dead end, but the hunt goes on. Exoplanets are opening our eyes to the way the universe works. We must question some long-held assumptions. One standard text predicts the sun will eventually engulf the Earth. But could there be a way out? Do some planets cheat death? In four and a half billion years, our sun will expand to become a red giant. When our own star turns into a red giant in four and a half billion years from now, then it will expand and it will engulf Mercury and Venus and the Earth and the Moon, and it will cook the surfaces of all of those bodies. But is there a way of escaping this apocalypse? When we look beyond our solar system to the Aquarius constellation, we find hope. Planet HD 203949b is living on borrowed time. It orbits a red giant star. 
red giant stars have burned up all the hydrogen in the middle and they've moved to the next stage of their development. A stage that's terminal for a planet orbiting this star. If you're a planet and you've been orbiting fairly close to your star for billions of years, you might feel like you've got a good relationship, that it's pretty safe, but in fact, you would be wrong. In fact, this star that has been taking care of you for billions of years is now going to destroy you. After billions of years of generating heat and light, a star's hydrogen fuel runs out. The star's core becomes unstable and contracts. Gravity just pulls everything to the center. And then there's a rebound, everything comes back again. And that creates this big envelope of gas around the star. The outer layers of gas blow off and expand outwards. As the gas envelope gets bigger, the surface cools to under 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The coolest stars appear red. So late in stars' lives, they are big, bloated red giants. When a star goes red giant, it expands and it expands outward and it's likely that it's going to come and engulf some of the planets that orbit that star. The surface is cooled, but temperatures still exceed 8,000 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're in the red giant expansion zone, you're gonna get cooked. Exoplanet HD 203949b orbits within this zone. So, is this planet toast? September 2019. We take a closer look at the red giant threatening the planet using a technique called astroseismology. Astroseismology measures the vibrations of stars. Vibrations go back and forth within the stars, and we can see those by monitoring the surface. One of the things that happens when these stars get to their red giant phase is they start ringing like a bell. When we hear these stars ringing, it actually gives us the most precise information we have about any stars. The vibrations from the red giant star reveal something highly surprising. When we analyzed the way this star was ringing, we realized it was actually less massive than we determined from other methods. It told us that star probably has already gone through its red giant phase. Um, the star we see today is a little smaller than it should have been quite a while back. This star has lost some of its outer layers and has started to shrink. If this star has already gone through its red giant phase and is shrinking again, that means at one point it was bigger than the orbit of this planet. If the planet was within the red giant zone, it should have been destroyed, but somehow it remained intact. By all accounts, this planet shouldn't exist, but somehow we see it there today, cheating death. What a survivor. So how can we explain this escape act? Could it be that this planet changed its orbital position to allow it to cheat death? Or maybe HD 203949b was never even in the kill zone. Perhaps this planet originally formed further out and migrated in after the red giant phase was completed. Maybe some of the clouds of gas shed from the star reached the planet. This gas dragged on the planet, slowing its orbit down. Gradually, the planet migrated inwards after the star reached its maximum size. And we then evolved down to the system that we see today, a, a post-red giant star with a planet that shouldn't be there, so to speak. This exoplanet may have escaped oblivion, but its future doesn't look bright. Its star will shrink down to a cool, dim white dwarf. If I were a planet, you know, I would be sad at the existence that I would live afterward, just because it would be so different. It would be cold and dark, and I would still be bound with a star that is no longer there in the same way that it was. This is our future, but it won't happen for another five billion years. In the meantime, we can be thankful we live on Earth rather than one of the weird worlds we've discovered in our galaxy.
The more and more exoplanets we find, the more we realize how lucky we really are. We see planets that are too big, too small, too much atmosphere, too little atmosphere, too close to their star, too far from their star, too little water, too much water. Everything on Earth is just right. Compared to our home world, exoplanets push and twist and stretch the boundaries of planetary science. But every new world we discover expands our knowledge and moves us closer to understanding our place in the universe. A lot of times we think about other planets and even life in the universe as resembling very much our own. But these weird worlds open the possibility that there's much, much more out there than we had ever imagined. We've found so many different kinds of crazy worlds in crazy places doing crazy things. It's so interesting. Imagine how boring it would be if we only found our solar system everywhere else.